Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling. And man, I really appreciate you guys uh, taking some time out of your day to watch my videos and spend some time with me. Really appreciate that. And guys, today we're going to be talking about what is going to happen on November 3rd, 2024, that every bass angler needs to be aware of. I'm going to go over that in today's video and give you my opinion on it. And I think you guys might find it pretty interesting here. Um, also, guys, your favorite part of the videos every day are housekeeping tips that we do to keep the channel on YouTube. Just wanted to give you a quick reminder that Tackle Warehouse has got some really cool fall sales going on where they have these deals where the more that you buy, the bigger discount that you get. Say, for example, if you buy you know, five lures or 10 lures, you get a certain percentage. If you buy 15, you know, items, you get even a, like a double the percentage. And if you buy like 20 items, you get like 40% off on some items. So I'll put my tackle warehouse link in the description. If you guys want to use that link for your tackle purchases, it really helps the channel out. And also we're in the middle of fall. So please swing by and check out my uh, fall fish the moment lake map breakdowns. I'll put the link in the description there. Great resources to help you learn more about your favorite lake. So really appreciate that. Okay guys, anybody can guess November 3rd, 2024, what's gonna go on? That is the day that the time changes. And in my opinion, every single year when you have a time change, it sort of marks a, it marks a time frame in the fall time of the year and also in the spring time of the year when you have two different time changes that it, there's a distinct shift in the mood and the personality of the bass in and around right up on this particular day. Then maybe not specifically on that day, but within that week, either side of it, there's a noticeable change <clears throat> in what the bass do and how they bite as far as different techniques and approaches. So I, what I want to do in today's video is I sort of want to explain to you what that transition is and how to take advantage of it. Now, every the, one of the biggest things in bass fishing that I think a lot of people don't really give enough uh, cred, uh, credence to as far as how, how to fish or what the bass do is the lengthening or shortening, shortening of the daylight hours. I mean, this time of year, you know, our daylight hours are getting shorter every, every single day. And to me, <clears throat> that has more of an impact on what the fish do than any other thing, even more than water temperature. I think that bass on some deeper biological rhythm that they have, they really respond to shortening days or, or lengthening days. And in the fall time of the year, we're rapidly losing the daylight. And the, when that time change takes place, it, 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 there's a completely different shift in the light intensity that you have on the water at different times of day versus what you had even, you know, a month before that. So what does this do to the bass? Okay, here's the thing that happens when this takes place. There is a window of time, and usually it's about a three-week period after you have the time change, which again is November 3rd of this year, where the bass move really shallow and they get really aggressive prior to when those water temperatures really start dropping. Normally what happens the first week in November, you're having some consistent cooling, but you haven't gotten those really, really shock cold, you know, nights yet. Once you get into December, <clears throat> sometimes even later in November, you'll get one of those Arctic fronts that blow through that gets the temperature down super cold, you know, maybe 15, 20 degrees below your normal lows. And once that happens, <clears throat> there's like a major shift into the winter pattern. But prior to that, first week in November, right around this, this November 3rd time change, you haven't really had those big Arctic fronts roll in yet. And what happens is these fish on a deeper biological level, they know that that's coming. They know that the water temperatures are on the way to dropping and their metabolism are gonna slow. So this creates like this, this accelerated level of feeding during this period. Usually it's the first week in November. So here's what you wanna to do to take advantage of it. There's two, well actually there's three, three critical elements to it. It's wind, it's shade, and it's moving baits. Those are the three things. So this year, guys, when it hits November 3rd, you need to have your spinner baits on. You need to have your faster moving crank baits on, some type of a swim bait or a glide bait, possibly a chatter bait, some type of a lure that you can reel um, at a fairly fast clip on a horizontal presentation in shallow water. My favorite is a spinner bait by far. First week in November, guys, you give me a low light condition. I don't care if it's sunny out, but you give me 
early in the morning, shady bank with a spinner bait, it's like money. Especially if you get a day where it's like rainy or cloudy in November, first week of November, spinner bait is gonna be a killer lure. So spinner bait, crank bait, glide bait, swim bait, and possibly a buzz bait or some type of a top water. Now, what another thing that happens here is when you have those temperatures start dropping that first week of November, a lot of times those temperatures are going to be dropping down, you know, into the 50s by then. When that water temperature, that first part of November starts getting down sort of between 54 to 60 degrees, this is the magic zone, these fish will get shallower than you've ever seen them before. If you have rock, and so, sometimes shallower wood, but sometimes rock. Let's say, for example, a perfect scenario. We're out there fishing on November 3rd, and it's a cloudy day, and the wind's blowing about 15 miles an hour, and the water temperature is, say, 50, 56 to 58 degrees. Guys, those bass will be in a foot of water in those situations. I've never seen it. It's like it happens every November. When you get that set of situations, those bass get super, super shallow, and that's when a buzz bait or spinner bait can work really, really good. Try to find those areas that have rocky banks, maybe on a little bit flatter bank, and take like a half ounce buzz bait and put it on some really heavy line and literally throw it to the bank where the, your lure sometimes hits the rocks and keep your rod tip high and just fish that buzz bait as slow as you possibly can on the surface. Those big ones will be up there in less than two foot of water and they'll just come up and suck that buzz bait down out of nowhere and in that type of situation. Same with the spinner bait, guys. My favorite, well, actually, there's two different type of spinner bait sets that set up I like. I like that little Mega Bass SV3 if the water's really clear because I'm burning that spinner bait over that over that shallow water. But if the water's got a little bit of stain to it, like if the water visibility say under two and a half feet, I like a big bladed spinner bait that I can slow roll down that real shallow area. So if it's clear got a little wind on the bank i'll throw that burning spinner bait down those rocks keep it like an inch under the surface and if the water's dirty i'll throw like a three quarter ounce spinner bait with like a number seven willow leaf on it again throwing it right up on the bank and just slow rolling it down in that stained water really really good ways to catch them another lure that works pretty good first week in november is taking some type of a flat sided crankbait and fishing on those same type of rocks to me that when you're talking november 3rd it's all about rock. You can catch them on wood a little bit, but it seems like when that water temperature starts dropping and you got shade and those daylight hours are really accelerating into shorter and shorter time periods, it, it rocks everything. And like I said, it, it, it depending upon the part of the country and how your lake set up, you may have gravelly banks, you may have rocks as big as your fist, you may have bluff banks, it all depends on that, but they really, really like to get on rock during that first week in November. That flat-sided crankbait, like that Mega Bass Flap Slap or, you know, like a Flat A Bomber or something like that, really, really good on rock. It's really, really good on riprap. Um, some type of a bluffy bank with rock transitions, it can be really good. Um, but, man, that's, that's my deal, guys. November 3rd, I've got my moving baits out for about three weeks. And it's some of the best, funnest fishing that you'll ever have. I'll tell you another bait I've caught on pretty good that a lot of people don't really fish in November is a floating worm. If you get out there and you've got the water temperatures in the upper 50s or around 60, you can take a floating worm and you can fish it around that shallow rock or shallow wood the same way that you would in the springtime because most people associate a floating worm with like fishing it in April during the spring. But just like I said, since those big fish are up super shallow that first week of November, try taking like a yellow or banana zoom trick worm fishing on a floating worm setup throw it right up on the bank on those rocks and I've caught some good ones doing that too. I did really get in the tournament, the Bassmaster Top 150 down at Lake Lanier in Georgia in November uh, using that technique down there. So anyway guys, a few different thoughts on that. Hope you guys are well. We'll talk later.